conditions and of course the uh, uh, conditions of the driver has to be factored in whether it be alcohol, inattentive um, or uh, impaired driving. So what they're going to do is they're going to find the origin um, as to where the vehicle was traveling. Um, there's trace evidence to show that the vehicle was traveling eastbound. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll get the distance from where the vehicle may have lost control or may have applied the brakes to the point of the, uh, the debris area in which it um, actually ran off of the roadway to and its final rest. And from there, they can actually do a speed calculation. Many close to the teens took to social media to remember 17-year-olds Josiah Blas and Timothy Uy. Guam DOE Superintendent John Fernandez on Sunday even tweeted his condolences to the teens' family and friends. For now, DOE officials say they are offering additional counseling support at Sanchez High as students and staff at the home of the Sharks continue to mourn their classmates gone too soon. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu Sinek Delgado. In other Island News headlines, a 17-year-old is being tried as an adult accused of having sex with a 12-year-old girl he apparently met on Instagram. Skylar Gumatautau has been charged with two counts of first-degree criminal sexual conduct. Court documents state the victim's grandfather caught the suspect under the blanket in the child's bedroom. The girl told authorities she met him on social media about a month prior. The complaint states the pair allegedly had sex on two separate occasions since meeting up. The victim admitted to authorities she told the suspect she was at least five years older than her actual age. The suspect admitted to the allegations but told police he, quote, thought the victim was 17 years old. Well, Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio, in other news, isn't set to face a jury for another five months. However, defense wants action now, specifically that the case be dismissed on grounds of suspect timing of the charges. Crystal Paco reports. Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio may be under fire for a gun grab incident, but it's Chief Prosecutor Joseph McDonald feeling the heat. Something needs to be done. Uh, this prosecution against the lieutenant governor is uncalled for. In a letter to the attorney general on Friday, defense attorney Thomas Fisher wants the action against Tenorio dismissed. As reported, the LT is set to face a jury next March for reckless conduct, reckless conduct with firearm, obstructing government function, and official misconduct, all as misdemeanors. The uh, charges were brought at a very suspect time, 66 days before the general election. Why was it brought now? Fisher is calling out McDonald, who he believes crafted the complaint in an effort to influence the outcome of the general election. He also questions a photograph depicting McDonald speaking with Democratic gubernatorial hopeful Lou Leon Guerrero. Let's assume that that's entirely innocent. Why would he exercised such poor judgment at this time to be seen with Ms. Leon Guerrero. The wording of the charges also a concern. For example, they're saying that he, that the lieutenant governor pointed a gun in the direction of someone. He did no such thing and they don't have any evidence of that. Why in the world would they make that accusation? What Carl Cruz said was the lieutenant governor essentially, according to him, picked up the gun like this and it was dangling towards the ground. Fisher anticipates filing a motion to dismiss in the Superior Court of Guam. Drop the case uh, so we don't have to go through this, uh, uh, you know, this unnecessary process. If we have to go to trial, we're going to trial, though. There's not going to be any plea agreement, nothing that. Do you think that maybe there's a concern that should he be elect the governor-elect that he could pardon himself? Uh, well, we certainly haven't considered that. Uh, uh, I d and uh, to be honest with you, I don't know whether... Um, a sitting governor has the authority to pardon himself, I suppose he does, but uh, he's going to be found not guilty of all these charges. Of that uh, we're confident. We should note Senator Talena Nelson has since introduced Bill 324, which would make disarming a peace officer a third degree felony. Fisher's response? Political. It's political. It's the other side trying to drive the story. To view Fisher's letter, visit our website. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. Crystal also does confirm that the AG's office said they're in receipt of the letter. Well, the retrial for a couple accused in a major drug investigation started today in federal court. Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser have been accused of trying to smuggle eight pounds of ice from California to Guam in 2015. Both the prosecution and defense attorneys presented their opening statements to a new jury today. Martinez and Moser's counsel is sticking to their entrapment defense, arguing that it was all a setup using criminal informant and former Guam customs officer Henry Alvendia. The couple had already pulled over by authorities in California when the apparent drugs were found. Martinez's attorney, Peter Perez, told jurors they would hear from a canine expert who would confirm the GPS tracking device on the rental car had been tainted with, tainted with narcotics before alerting the drug detector dog. That's where the defense is saying this was all a setup. 
Perez added that the authorities secured the device following the traffic stop, but never noted it in their police report. The pair is back in trial and jury after the mistrial was declared earlier this year. Trial does continue tomorrow. Well, also from district court, unsealed was the matter of Vincent Q. Lujan, and he's entered a plea agreement with the feds for his role in a conspiracy to distribute the drug ICE. Last year, Lujan received a package from Tacoma, Washington, containing over 111 grams of meth with a 99% purity rate. Lujan admitted he was expecting a couple of ounces, which he agreed to pay $5,000 per ounce for. He faces a decade behind bars. Also tonight, calling out members of his own party, his opponents, and the three Democratic representatives on the Guam Election Commission, Senator Frank Ogan Jr. and former U.S. Attorney Alicia Limtiaco said no more. And in front of hundreds of supporters, they announced their plans to run as writing candidates in the upcoming general election. Chris Barnett reports. Team Ogan Limtiaco is coming in hot unleashing a barrage of shots aimed at their party and their opponents. An answer back to criticisms from Lou and Josh and the Democratic Party of Guam about an Ugg and Limtiaco writing campaign. I know that the people running the Democrat Party are downright mad at us. I know that many of you have been pressured, attacked, and bullied on social media by members and supporters of the other campaign. We've been called names. We've been ridiculed on live broadcast. They want us to accept politics as usual. Dirty politics, backdoor deals, and the mudslinging and orchestrated smear attacks. And we've been told to throw in the towel, but our people have and continue to say no more. The Ugg and Limtiaco team losing to Democrat opponents Lou Leon Guerrero and Josh Tenorio in the primary election by just 272 votes. A margin so small, Limtiaco said it was the closest ever in a gubernatorial election on Guam. Their decision to launch a write-in campaign, according to them, based on pleas from the people and betrayal from within their party, which assailed them with negative attack ads, even before the ink on a unity pledge was dry. Any pledge of unity was broken even before the ink was dry. And to attack us as dividing the party for considering the plea of our people to move forward with a write-in campaign is hypocritical. Limtiaco also questioning the objectivity of the three Democratic members of the Guam Election Commission Board who did not support Ogun Limtiaco's effort to have a hand recount and a hand count of the spoiled ballots from the primary election. Was it to protect the gubernatorial team they support, which was and is not our team? The Ogun Limtiaco team says they're like you, everyday people, not like their opponents. We are listening and our people are saying we will not list we will not be intimidated and fearful and we are not afraid of your money and we are not and we are not afraid to believe that anything is possible for guam's news network chris barnett reports also noteworthy is the fact that on election night, if it becomes apparent that write-in votes could affect the gubernatorial race, the GEC says they will begin hand-counting the ballots. Watch out for that. Well, the Democrats are sticking to their guns, saying Lou and Josh are the party's choice, even if there are two Democratic teams running in the general election. They should have said something. That's what the vice chair of the Democratic Party says Ogun Limtiaco should have done when they were attacked in the weeks leading up to the primary election. John Jr. Calvo, vice chair of the Democratic Party, said Senator Frank Ogan and attorney Alicia Limtiaco's reps attended party unity meetings and never mentioned the attacks, which Ogan Limtiaco says came from the Lou and Josh team. At no point that I'm aware of uh, was uh, any of these issues raised, and had it been raised, it's definitely something that we would have taken up. Calvo, who coincidentally hosted a Lou and Josh rally last night in Jigo, did not say why the Democratic Party is not looking into the attack ad allegations made by Ogun Limtiaco now. When we asked if the Democratic Party did enough to mend the divide between Lou and Josh and Ogun Limtiaco, 
Cabo said efforts were made. Even after the primary election, uh, I think the Leon Guerrero Tenorio camp has uh, done their due diligence in uh, uniting the party and embracing um, all the other teams that uh, did not prevail in the primary election. Only one of the primary election losers on the Democratic side has endorsed the Lou and Josh team, former Governor Carl Gutierrez and running mate Fred Berdalio. Senator Dennis Rodriguez has not endorsed Lou and Josh, and Ugin Limtiaco, well, we think you know how that ended up. We asked Calvo if Ugin Limtiaco were to win the general election, would the party consider it a win for the Democrats? Uh, no, actually, you know, the reality is, is that our Democratic standard bearers are uh, Lulian Guerrero and Josh Sonoro for the gubernatorial race. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. All right, good job, Chris. Double duty tonight. Well, it is that time where we bring you more candidates who will make their way to the general election in November. Tonight's D18, tonight, guests will be Senatorial Candidate Amanda Blas and Democrat Joseph Augustine. You can indicate, interact with the candidates by watching our live stream on Facebook and posting your questions as a comment so we can get it to them. D18 comes up right after the news. Well, please stay tuned. There is more news after this. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Cheers to 80 years! It's our 80th anniversary and the gifts are on us! 80 gift certificates, 8 shopping sprees, 8 staycations, and 1 round trip flyaway for 2 to Manila. So how do you enter? Cavos Insurance personal home and auto customers are automatically entered. non cavos customers may enter by receiving a qualified quote. It's our way of saying thank you for trusting us for the past 80 years. For more details, visit Cavos.com slash giveaway or call 472-6816. Cavos Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Win adventure in the ITE Explore Your World Million Mile Giveaway. Every week from July 16 to November 2nd, we're giving away 60,000 United Mileage Plus miles to ITE postpaid and prepaid subscribers. Imagine where you could go. Go on a weekend getaway to the Philippines. Enjoy fresh sushi in Japan. It's a dakimas. Sip a latte at a cafe in Paris. Or use your miles for shopping and other rewards. It's your world. Explore it. 30 years ago, I moved to Guam from the Philippines to make a better life for my family. I worked hard every day. We struggled, but I was happy to do it for my kids. This is my house. It isn't fancy, but it's home. I will do anything to protect my family, but I don't feel safe. I don't see police patrolling the villages like I used to. Guam is not the same. Criminals are getting braver because they know we don't have enough police officers. The lieutenant governor says public safety is a priority. He's been in the office for eight years and had the chance to do something to make us safer, but he didn't. I'm tired of empty promises. I want someone who's going to get the job done. That's why I'm voting for Lou and Joss. Sa November 6, ako po ay boboto para kay Lou at Joss. At inaanyahan ko po kayong lahat na maniwala na mayroon tayong karapatan na maramdaman na ligtas ang Boto sa kanila. Ako po si Bobby Gopez. Maraming salamat po. I'm Lulian Guerrero and I approve this ad. Chuck E. Cheese's Guam is not all fun and games. Our pizza is delicious with the freshest toppings, oven baked to order. Try the fresh salad bar, sandwiches, and don't forget our mouth watering wings. Come and eat at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Welcome back, everybody, to the show. The Guam Police Department will not be conducting an Election Day survey on its community-based policing strategy after all. Guam's finest plan, plan to pass out the questionnaires on Election Day, and instead, they'll delay it until an unspecified later date. Meanwhile, in a news conference Monday, Police Chief J.I. Cruz denies it was ever a partisan political move as critics charged, but rather a chance to excess a large number of people. Nesha Lacanto reports. Police Chief J.I. Cruz expressed disappointment with the controversy. He says public speculation that officers were to be dispatched on Election Day to talk up the community-oriented policing strategy and boost the image of public safety czar and Republican gubernatorial candidate Ray Tenorio were simply not true. Kind of saddened that, that people are, are, use, are using the, the, the dynamics of the, the, the season, the, 
you know, the, the atmosphere, the landscape of the political season to take something as pure in intent and, and, and look at, and try and find malice behind it. Uh, that was what was disheartening to me. So I wouldn't say that I was surprised, but I was, I was again, I was more disheartened at, the, at that fact that people would, would, would insinuate that. Chief Crew says the intent was to take advantage of the expected 40,000 plus voter turnout. A good opportunity, he says, to hand out the 30,000 survey form seeking public input on the COPS program. But the Election Commission rejected passing out the questionnaires at the sites anyway. And now Cruz says they intend to step back until a later date and perhaps come up with another method to gather the information. There's web base, um, you know, the ability to go online. Almost everybody these days has a, a smartphone and the ability to do that. So there are many, there are several different options, which is again why we decided to, to go ahead and step back, all things considered. GPD says they need about 17,000 responses for a statistically valid survey. Cruz says public feedback will let them know how well the COPS program is doing, what they need to improve on, and it might even help with future funding. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Liconto. Elsewhere in GovGuam, the Port Authority has celebrated its 43rd anniversary this week. That was just a fragment of the kickoff event, which included the traditional parade of tractors and trucks. The Port also honored its distinguished pioneers and recent retirees. Now, they included KUM's own Island Girl, Helen Uggen, who retired from her position as a Marine Traffic Controller last month after 26 years of service. Well done, Auntie Helen. Uh, congratulations to her as the port has scheduled a series of events to celebrate more than four decades as our primary port of entry. An estimated 90% of all cargo brought into Guam is cleared through commercial ports. Well, this past weekend, before family, friends and children he has delivered and their mothers, Dr. Tom Shea broke ground on a new location for his obstetrics and gynecology clinic. Uh, you're going to be seeing me for a long, long time. When I first came here with the United States Navy, I never thought I was going to be here. But uh, 22 years later, uh, Guam is going to be our home. And I've delivered close to 9,000 babies, done uh, several thousand surgical procedures, did bone marrow drives, medical missions, and we saved a lot of lives. And some of you are the lives that we saved today. So I want to thank you all for giving me the honor to do that. The very popular local physician added the new clinic is not just for him, but for his staff to have a permanent home and for the future generation. Dr. Shea's clinic will be located across Shirley's in Timuni. And also tonight, Fire Prevention Week concluded with a big finale held at the Aganis Shopping Center on Saturday. Throughout the day, there were rescue demonstrations held outside, static displays and fire safety info from various partners, as well as entertainment from musicians and dance groups. This year's theme was Look, Listen, Learn, Be Aware, Fire Can Happen Anywhere. Job well done to our friends in the fire department. Sports is coming up next. to earn reward points using the Alpha Plus app. Here, let me show you. Simply register with the all new Alpha Plus app and earn reward points while making purchases at your favorite stores you already shop at.